This is not a creature from nightmares. It is a memory, carved in the dirt of a forgotten world. A time before dinosaurs, before wings ruled the air, when power belonged to the ground. When giants did not fly, they crawled. Three hundred and ten million years ago, the Earth was a living greenhouse. Forests stretched endlessly across swamps the size of continents. The air was thick with moisture and heavy with life. Lightning cracked over black skies, and rain fell for centuries without pause. Each drop feeding a jungle of ferns, mosses, and trees that reached 30 meters high. It was the Carboniferous period, a world fueled by oxygen. Every breath then carried more life than ours does today. With oxygen levels near 35%, the air itself was fire waiting to happen. It allowed insects to grow to monstrous sizes, and among them rose a creature that defied imagination. The forest floor stirs, mud shifts. A body longer than a man's height glides from beneath a fallen log, segmented armor shining in the filtered sunlight, a thousand legs moving in perfect rhythm like a living machine. This is Arthropleura, the largest arthropod ever to crawl upon the Earth. Two and a half meters from head to tail, each segment moves with precision, a silent wave of motion rippling across its body. Its exoskeleton glistens black and bronze beneath the dripping canopy. When it passes, even the ground seems to hum. It moves slowly, deliberately, a vegetarian giant feeding on rotting leaves and decaying ferns. Each bite releases the scent of wet earth and ancient rain. Its world is dense, dark, and steaming. Every surface crawls with life. Centipedes the length of arms, spiders the size of human faces, dragonflies with wingspans wider than a crow's. Above, the forest hums. Below, the soil breathes. Morning in this world is eternal twilight. Sunlight struggles through mist and canopy, painting everything in shades of green and gold. Arthropleura moves toward a shallow stream, where fallen branches rot into black soil. It drinks through its underbelly, absorbing moisture a ritual of survival in this damp cathedral of life. But the forest is not silent. Hidden among roots and shadows lurk the first true predators of the land, primitive amphibians, slick and strong, with jaws built for ambush. One waits, still as stone, its eyes fixed on the rippling plates of the giant millipede. The moment stretches, Rain drips. Then a sudden strike, a blur of motion and teeth. The jaws clamp down on hardened armor with a metallic snap. The Arthropleura rears, its body curling, legs clawing into the mud, flinging debris like a storm. The predator thrashes, overwhelmed by sheer mass. The giant slams it against a rock and the hunter retreats into darkness. Victory, but not triumph. In this forest, survival is never glory, only persistence. As the day fades, the jungle grows louder. Frogs the size of cats croak from the pools. Insects hum a low electric song through the air. The giant crawls slowly back into the shadows its armored plates glimmering under flickers of lightning. Steam rises from the ground like ghosts. And above the forest, storms roll endlessly. For millions of years, these creatures would reign unchallenged, turning dead plants into the black carbon that would one day power human civilization. Coal the final echo of their forests. 
But nature never stands still. The age of abundance would not last. Volcanoes tore open the crust of the world. The climate cooled. The great swamps began to dry, and the very thing that made these giants possible, oxygen, began to fall. The fire in the air dimmed, and with it, the breath of the Arthropleura grew thin. Slowly, the titans vanished. Their world collapsed under its own weight. Ferns turned to dust. Forests became fossils, and the footsteps of giants faded into the soil they once ruled. Yet the earth remembers. In Scotland, Germany, and Nova Scotia, traces of Arthropleura still lie etched in stone. Broad, winding trails that look like rivers frozen in time. Proof that the ground once trembled with the crawl of monsters. Today, children press their hands to the glass of museum displays. Staring at those marks, their imagination set ablaze. They ask, did something like this really exist? And the answer is simple, yes. The earth has always given birth to giants. We are just the latest ones. So the next time you walk through a forest after rain, listen closely. Beneath the rustle of leaves and the hum of insects, you might hear it. The faint, rhythmic tapping of countless legs. The heartbeat of an age when giants crawled the earth. <laughs>